Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hello, Internet. Today is April 14th, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, TV, things we watch on screens, in front of our faces, wherever we are. I am the host, Malango, at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron. How's it going? Sorg of Sorgatron? Like, is this like, I feel like, are we naming each other, like, the way they do in Game of Thrones now? Is that, like, a part of it? Are we really kind of adopting this and all the excitement over this weekend? I want a name. <laughs> Ashley of <laughs> Ashleyville. <laughs> no. Ashley of Macedonia. There you go. I like that. Of oh, Macedonia. I, I do like, like that. that. Creative. All right. That, has that to be other your... voice that we heard was the New York connection. Yes. Mad oh! Not today. <laughs> I am the father of dragons from the great land of Pau Kipsai. <laughs> <laughs> that Khaleesi. Wow. <laughs> You had some angry dragons this weekend. Oh, That's... wow. I will not turn this podcast to a, into a human cockfighting pit. <laughs> and uh, don't mace with me, Ashley. Oh, no. I don't want to take the shot off of him. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Put it on. Put it on the hot stuff. Put it on the top. He, put it, yeah, he, there can, you go. he can fill in for me for the day. Wow. You can be me and you. That's amazing. Yeah. You're welcome. How's it going? How's it going, Ashley? Good. I am back from amazing. Uh, sunny. Is it sunny? Sunny South Carolina? It w- yeah, it was pretty sunny. Um, not much different than what it was here yesterday, but uh, it was beautiful weather. So I might uh, just move I down. I envy there. your job, which just yeah. sends you places. Oh, I, know. So I get to go to Michigan next week. I don't Man, know. Man, my job there. only sent me to Detroit. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to go to Saginaw. Michigan next week, Ugh. so I'm not so Ugh. much sorry to anyone in Michigan, but I'm not looking forward to going there. So that they know, <laughs> they know, <laughs> <laughs> they know. They're pretty. They're aware. <laughs> they get it. They get it. <laughs> hey, um, so Matt, and Mike, yes, what is going on with Ant Man? Oh, so much is going on with Ant Man. Um, well, we just saw the trailer. I'm going to put my dragon down because dragons are afraid of ants, as we all know. Um. Ant Man, I ha- like. I know a lot of people think that Ant Man is going to bomb. I don't think it is. I was I one of those people. And I, now I'm kind of like. Uh, well, I I, re- I was able to read the Ant Man prequel comic, uh, which is available at all your local fine comic book stores, and it kind of tells how Ant Man ties in with the rest of the Marvel universe. The basic premise is Hank Pym worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. back in the day with um, Peggy Carter and Howard Stark and had the capability of the Ant-Man suit way back when. But he just decided to stop using it because they wanted him to do things that he wasn't comfortable with. And so now it looks like Scott Lang, who is Paul Rudd's character, um, is a thief and tried to steal the Ant-Man suit and now is working for Hank Pym. And... It just looks like a hell of a lot of fun. They finally showed off what Yellow Jacket looks like, who's the pre- uh, one of the preeminent Ant-Man villains. They show him running up the barrel of a gun, which is amazing. Uh, they show him shrinking down in a shower, and I'm just super excited about Ant-Man. I think it, I think the visuals are going to look amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, the biggest thing is selling something like this because it's such a goofy concept, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think showing how the ants work, seeing the bad guy looks threatening, and, and seeing this epic battle, and then showing the scale of the train uh, at the yeah. end there, it was was pretty good. So there's going to be a humor to it, uh, and I think like Paul, and I love every scene of Paul Rudd is like he's just completely not sold on the concept of what he has to do here. He doesn't even like the name. Like no. that's perfect. Yeah, it, 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 and I, I don't know. I don't know much about the Scott Lang character. Everything I read was always uh, Hank Pym, the little bit of Ant Man that I've I've read in some Avengers comics. Uh, but uh, I, I like I like this presentation. I think it's a lot of fun. Do you yeah, think you'll I like think Paul Rudd in that role? 
this is like a unique role for I can't see him in this kind of as a hero. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but he's still uh, but he but Scott uh Scott Lang's kind of a thief and a jerk. So, <laughs> I mean, it kind of works and and Hank Pym is generally played off as an ass in the Marvel comics, so Michael Douglas thumbs up uh, on that one. He he can play a good oh, ass. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He can perfect. play a You're not ass. supposed to like Hank I mean, Pym. I mean, like picture Wall Street but with shrinking superheroes. Yeah, the end of that trailer is awesome, by the way. The scale with the train. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm totally, I have to, uh, I don't know, swallow something because, yeah, I totally don't, felt Don't leave that out there. Don't leave that out there. No, uh, <laughs> you need clarification on that one. Yeah, context, please. Eat, context. Eat my pride. I don't know. In context <laughs> with the with the movie draft that which I was in a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. I did not think this movie would do anything. I thought this would be Marvel's first like movie to tank. Oh, oh, oh mm-hmm. you you don't know. Now I, I I gotta say I don't <laughs> expect this to do like Guardians of the Galaxy numbers, but it's gonna do well. It's gonna it's do gonna, damn well. I don't know. There's they don't have much competition. When does this come out? In August, I think. No. Uh, yeah. Whatever. I think they're going to do just fine. I think they're going to do just fine. I think Ant Man is going to at least make 300, 400 mil. Uh, I personally the movie don't care, but good luck. So frustrated with. <laughs> <laughs> we'll turn into superhero movies yet. Mm hmm. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, Sorg, you got the box office numbers. I do. And guess what? People with cars and Vin Diesel's and The Rock <laughs> and everything. Uh, Furious 7 coming in at nearly $60 million. In, uh this was uh, week two for them. Holmes hanging in there at number two with only $18.5 million. And the longest ride was the newcomer this year from Fox, $13 million at number three. Um, longest ride that was, does anybody recall what this that- film was? Was. That's the Nicholas yeah. Sparks one, or oh, Nicholas yeah, Sparks yeah, yeah, esque yeah. about the bullfighter. And oh, okay, okay. It looked like it's, hot garbage. Oh no! I am so not, tired of Nicholas Sparks. I'm sorry, I just am. <laughs> I, I have it's only the seen same stuff. two Nicholas Sparks movies: A Walk to Remember and The Notebook. I liked one. I despised the other. Oh, let me guess. <laughs> let me guess which one you liked. Well, guess <laughs> The Notebook. No, a walk to remember. Are you serious? Actually, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, like, Shane likes like, like more this. of that. That was my, the movie was my jam. That was Do good. not underestimate Mad Mike's sensitive side. Oh. <laughs> These dragons are being cared for very. They're very not dragons. Delicate. They're fake dragons, or they're not even. They're, they will grow to be dragons. Don't tell them be. that. Yeah, seriously, earmuffs. <laughs> Very protective. <laughs> yeah, I saw this movie and I saw it for free. Thank goodness, and it was bad. Well, you actually <laughs> saw that one? Yeah, because it was like it was my birthday, so I was like, and I had the free movie. So well, why do you like, hate yourself on your birthday? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> it was bad, guys. The bull uh, riding was bad. Everything was bad. The girl was bad. Did was you last bad. eight seconds? <laughs> you did last eight seconds, surprisingly. Or are you asking, did I last eight seconds? I'm asking if you lasted eight seconds. <laughs> There's way too many open-ended comments going on here. Mm-hmm. I'll never tell. Anyway. <laughs> you know, Poughkeepsie is saying. in the land of double entendre sword, so. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I don't know which. I mean, all right. Obviously, this is the biggest story, right? Is this the biggest story, Ashley? Would you say this is the biggest story? Game of Thrones, yes. Game of Thrones. Coming <laughs> out. I'm gonna say the second biggest story, but then again, I'm wearing a Khaleesi wig, so I can't really argue with this. Point. Exactly. So and, right, right, and I a mean, dragon necklace. On. So yes. <laughs> a dragon necklace, yes. Yeah, so oh, it's not on. a necklace. They're they're perched on my shoulders. If so. you listen to this audio, you have to at least listen to. The first, watch the first few uh, minutes. Sorry, see sorry, what the we'll hell just is do a, a nice cover shot for the podcast. <laughs> That's right. I don't even need the. Yeah, this yeah. is it. This is it right here. My my Instagram. I'm just sending out. It's going to be your cover. By the way, you're tagged. Love it. Yeah. So Game of Thrones this weekend. Mm-hmm. Who else is just 
So excited to have it back. I am happy. I am I, I'm secondarily happy because that means Silicon Valley's back, but we'll get into that in a moment. Yep. But no, yeah. <laughs> it's a night. Nice, it, it's like uber geekery weekend. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was. I, and I was I, way I too. I didn't leave my house. And I was way too busy <laughs> to t partake on as much of it as I'd love to, you know? Um, but uh, but no, I, I, but Game of Thrones, great to have it back. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, nice shift for everything. To see where we're going, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how into it I want to get. <laughs> I know. I think I don't what, know where to start. Oh, that's true. So how? Yeah. Was, is this a spoiler? I don't, Are we going to do a Tyrion spoiler? Tyrion is oh, awesome. Yeah. Totally spoiler. That's not right, a listen, spoiler. Listen. Tyrion no. is awesome. Tyr yeah, Tyrion is my favorite. Now yeah. all time. Um, um, I got sad because I forgot that Hodor died until there was a joke on another show I was listening to. <laughs> He wait. Didn't he die wait, no, who died? no, but no. They're actually not. They're not talking about that storyline this season. So, so oh Bran, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. Bran, Hodor, they're they're cut from this season. No way. Yeah, I thought I, he died. Yeah, last no, season. no. Well, oh. because they're caught up. Um, Bran and Hodor are caught up to where they are in the books, right? Oh, I haven't, I haven't read the books, so it's gonna be so weird because all those kids are gonna be like uh, like two years older I by know. the time we get back to them. Well, look, just look at Arya and Sansa and. I yeah. mean, they're, they're yeah, yeah. so much older looking than what they were, obviously, yeah. at the beginning of I, I, the series. I've been looking at Sansa. You've been, oh, <laughs> are you oogling? I'm, I'm just saying, very excited to see her as Jean Grey. That's going to be great. <laughs> oh, man. But. Yeah, the House of the Lannisters is totally screwed. Did That's you like? Did, did you like the opening? Did, did you kind of make that connection right away, or did you oh, think yeah. that it was like something total? I, I did too, sort of. It I was mean, It was interesting. Um... I don't know. I hope they don't do more stuff like this just to kind of fill out the episodes. Yeah, it felt contrived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, it felt forced and it, it just. It didn't look like it was a scene in the book or like no. a concept that was in the book. It looked like something that, they oh, it. we should throw this in because we don't have a lot more material. Thanks, George R. Martin. Yeah, I, I agree. It felt forced and something that, like you said, you wouldn't see in the book. It just felt uncreative. Mm -hmm. Um,. So no, I don't. I, I kind of liked it in a way, but then also I I, I didn't. I mean, it was you, you were kind of following along with it, wondering like where it was going to go. But then I when will I figured say out I, where it was going to go, I was like, eh. <laughs> I will say I did like the actress that played young Cersei. Yeah, she was a little badass. She, she was on point. She like yeah. as soon as, as soon as you walked in, we we're like, oh yeah, that's Cersei Lannister when she was younger. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, her hair is the same way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But. Yeah, that that threw me off for a second, and then I was like, "Oh wait, this is definitely going to be Cersei." Right. And and then we cut into Present what we day. saw. Yeah, I'm excited about Jon Snow. I want to see more of of what goes uh, on there. Yeah, I mean the whole um, uh, Stannis Baratheon connection up there is interesting. This this may be blasphemous. Jon Snow bores me. <laughs> No, nah. Every scene that he's not in that didn't have regret in it just bored me to tears. Like I, I'm more invested in Sam than I am in Jon Snow. I do like <laughs> Sam. Sam is just that lovable character that you hope never dies. Exactly. <laughs> like I feared for his life yeah. the entire series. Yeah. You're like this is a guy that shouldn't last <laughs> exactly. in this world. I know, but Absolutely. you want him to. You you cheer him on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um. I don't know. I'm excited to see Tyrion connect with Daenerys, and to see how that can, to see how that's going to go because I, I love those are my two favorite characters in the entire show. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited mm -hmm. now that they're going to Marine to to visit her. I'm so. It excited. seems like that's kind of what they've been building to this whole time. And I had a feeling. I mean, she's going to connect with somebody at some point, but I just I mean, and I want to see more of her dragons. I mean, the one is loose, and he's been loose. No, it's not a dragon. Oh, there you oh. go. <laughs> But it's scary. Can't fool me. No, he's cute. He's not scary. Okay. He's cute. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I heard that the first five episodes also leaked online. The first four. And I was, yeah, yeah. I, was tempted, I was tempted to go search for them, but I'm just gonna wait. Yeah. And just don't. Yeah, thing. don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. I understand I they're they're DVD release copies, so they're not even like full resolution if you find them. Right. So unfortunately, so yeah, don't, don't. Don't just, do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Just be patient. Just, just be a dude, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. I watched 13 episodes of an entire show on Friday, Sorg. <laughs> you think just be a dude. <laughs> be a dude, dude. Come on. And dudes don't do that, dude. 
no. Clearly, we still. Don't. Although people wearing white wigs might, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> what what wig? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Anyways, yes. Um, the other big story this week. Mm-hmm. Daredevil. Daredevil. Yes. Daredevil. <laughs> well, I go. Did you have you watched a bit of it? Nope. All I right. had to. I had to finish watching because a season finale, a series finale, is tonight. So I had to get caught up with another awesome show called Justified. Mm. All right. I'm, I'm way early on that. I'm probably like nine episodes in on the first season of that. Uh, well, so the biggest news, even if, you, if, drama, you, oh, yeah, even if you don't have 13 hours to, to, to kill like uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mrs. I don't know, Mad Mike here. <laughs> um, if you get a chance, you can find it. It's out there. Um, it's been making the social media rounds uh, the last couple days, but the, uh, the, the, the three minute straight, one shot fight scene from uh, the second episode of the series, actually, mm-hmm. as I cue to it, raises right the door closes, um, is freaking tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> the fighting in this is so realistic. I was, uh, I think we were talking, I, I was thinking I was listening to Cord Killers and they said how, how, you no, know, I was going to see a different show, how, um, the fighting in this, like, feels real and there's consequence to it. This isn't a superhero uh, fight like, you know, you normally would have. He goes into this injured, um, and, uh, and yeah, it feels real. It feels fun, and 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 that I love this one shot stuff. Uh, Birdman, we talked about right. on here before. How was an yeah. entire movie done in this kind of style? And uh, and yeah, I can kind of see where the cutaways are, um, or at least <laughs> potentially are, right? But still, like it comes off amazing. And this is the kind of thing we talked about last year with True Detective, where you had this giant scene that went through an entire neighborhood that was that was uh, perceivably one shot. You know, um, and, and that's the kind of stuff that gets people talking. And now this is out there and now people are seeing this and hopefully drawn in and, and they're getting buzzed, not just for this being a superhero show, but having the style and and really kick it out. Uh, I think we're watching it and, and there's so many moments in this, Mike. And we're talking about this before the show where um, it gets gruesome. And I compare it a little bit to like how the the, you know, the uh, the mountain fight dies, mm-hmm. uh, the, fa- the mountain fight ends the in the uh, and, and yeah, with the Viper yeah. on, on Game of Thrones last season, there's a lot of that. You don't see a lot, but there's a lot of broken bones, a lot of crunches, a lot of blood. You know, and it's enough to make like oh, several times. Both of us watching this, we're like, ah, no it way. Makes you cringe. It is it's oh, very yeah, cringe worthy uh, violence hmm. in this thing. It is violent. It is TVMA. It is straight up. Yeah, it I is not. It. it is not for children. No, no. Um, it, and it, and every time it happened, I, I'd see her react and I would say, okay. This is basically HBO, so just have that expectation at this point, right? That is freaking awesome because this is basically the Batman to the Marvel universe, right? Um, more oh, or less. They out, they out, dark and gritty Nolan. <laughs> the first four episodes, yes, they do. I'm yeah, gonna absolutely awesome. say that. There's no point where Matt Murdock just like looks around and says, "So that's what that feels like." Like, there's none of that. <laughs> like, they're they're. It's so good. It's but I think the best part is that you still have like his human interactions with people and they feel normal. They feel grounded. It's not like he's a constantly moping Bruce Wayne where he's ready mm-hmm. to pull guns on people. Like Matt Murdock actually seems like a fairly likable guy. And, and, and to be fair, I think he has a crappier life than Bruce did. Oh, he's he's oh, blind, yeah. Sorg. Of course, he has a, a spoiler alert: Matt Murdock is blind. Um, <laughs> he's blind. Gets him, learns how to fight, and I think we're going to touch a little bit on that. Right, stick is a part of this, right, Mike? Uh, we episode do get into that? seven. Episode yeah. seven. Um, so we see that we didn't see that kind of stuff in the movie. Um, um, got himself through law school, blind, yep. and then the rest of his life has to pretend he needs a stick. So. Yep. Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it's pretty fun, and I think they explore. Um, they they you never heard saw this much before, but the whole he has, has a human a lie detector because he can hear your heartbeat is played mm-hmm. up a lot. Mm-hmm. And oh, at yeah. a certain point, like a first like episode or two, you're uh, actually mostly a first episode. You're just like, I feel like I'm watching Law and Order, but more badass. Um, and and but it works. It completely works. So, and uh, I have to say that one of my favorite things about it is. As much as I do like the director's cut of Daredevil, mm-hmm. they don't go into how Matt sees things. 
like they show it once, like how like how Matt Murdock actually sees the world, like a POV. Yeah. It's not like the sonar vision that you would that, that was in the Daredevil movie. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. so they just show him reacting to stuff. It's not like he has spider senses or anything like that. They just show him reacting and he it's in the way that he mentions things that shows off his powers. Like he'll say to someone, "Oh, you had uh, tuna for lunch." Three days ago, that I just smelled on your breath. Like or, he'll or, or he'll smelling. say stuff like that where his yeah. senses are so heightened, he can tell like, okay, there's someone three floors below us running up the stairs quickly. He has a slight limp or something like that. Right, like, right, right. Like, like everything that's going on him, you can tell he knows. Yeah, the, 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 that second the, the second episode where he's like, "There's a guy looking for me. He's going to come to the door. He's three floors away." And 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 he's and he has, he were he has a really bad smelling cologne. Yes, trust me, you'll smell the cologne. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and, and it's a lot. It, it's gritty, but it's still like a, there's a small sense of fun in there. Um, and I think that's that's the thing. I, the thing that that brings Marvel away from the other things that you know they're bringing the essence of the comic is there's still some fun. Mm-hmm. Right now, I will say this: if you haven't seen any of Daredevil yet, and you're looking for like. Huge tie-ins like Agents of Shield? No, you're not going to get that. You have passing mentions. It is interesting because in this first episode, but the whole reason everything is happening the way it is is mm-hmm. a reaction to what happens in the first Avengers movie. Yeah, um, basically they're like, like uh, uh, this one company like takes Hell's it, Kitchen got the worst. Yeah, Hell's Kitchen basically but got it, it the worst. And they're rebuilding, and there's there's people taking advantage of it. Which, to be fair, in the Avengers movie. Most of the fighting seemed concentrated on the east side of Manhattan, Listen. as opposed to the west side. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. There are freaking aliens everywhere, that. Mike. Let's not split hairs on this. I know, <laughs> I know. I'm just it just <laughs> popped into my brain. I had to say it once, but still, it totally works because <laughs> hell, because they portray Hell's Kitchen as a huge like area where there's tons of crime all over the place. Isn't there some distinction that the uh, the, the Oscorp building is the same thing as the Avengers Tower? Um, it's also the same as the tower in the Ninja Turtles movie. It's well, just that's a different universe. universe. Come on, Mike. Is it, though? <laughs> it would be amazing if it wasn't. I know, hey. right? <laughs> that building's been through some... Uh, but I, I will say this. like I thought Arrow had probably the best fight coordinating team mm-hmm. on television. Mm-hmm. This blows Arrow out of the water. Well, it only gets better. That. I mean, yeah. it's on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's so it's Netflix also on it. It's on it's on that cable that premium cable level too, mm-hmm. versus CW level. So I think they're just generally gonna have a better budget too. But I don't know. I don't know the numbers. But and um, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is amazing. So good as he so plays good a actor. very different kingpin than Michael Clark Duncan did. Mm-hmm. Almost to the point where he's like, and you'll see more of this when you get into it more. Um, he had a very uh, traumatic childhood, and he's kind of like a child that has these huge fits of anger and just lashes out. Mm-hmm. I, I'm up through the one where um, uh, he he basically I, I named my our first introduction to him as Kingpin finds love. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I mean that's the whole arc with the Kingpin. Is, is it that, okay? Yeah, like if you remember the old uh, '90s Spider-Man cartoon. That was the kingpin. Like, he did everything for his wife Vanessa, which in this one he's just meeting Vanessa. But still, oh, okay, yeah, awesome. All right, uh, <laughs> since we just spent like the last time. Hey, we're geeking out there. over here. Look at the guy. Uh, Silicon Valley. Actually, do you That's... watch? Do you watch any of these other two shows? Silicon Valley. I've no, I've never seen that one. Oh, I, I think, I think would, I'd like it though. I think you'd yeah. like it. Yeah, Ashley, you can, you can binge it in less than a day. I did. Yeah. Okay, there's not much to it. They're half hour episodes. Yeah. They didn't have. They had like six episodes the first season. Uh-huh. So, uh, do you like Office Space? Yes, I love Office Space. Um, you like Entourage with computer geeks because that's what <laughs> yeah, that's so. Weird. If I like Office Space, I will like this. I think so. Okay. It's a lot of the same humor. Okay, just way geeked up. So. <laughs> But uh, just talking about that earlier today, Milton. That. Milton, uh, there's, there's kind the of Milton. a Milton. The, the, the guy from uh, the office. Oh, there's a Milton. There's a Milton in every office. There's a Milton in every office. Yeah, there's an office. Uh, 
Yeah. You know, they're kind of like all a degree of Milton because they're all antisocial geeks in some way. There's a Milton inside everybody. That's right. Inside everybody's <laughs> Uh Phrasing. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, come yeah, on. the return of basically the whole cast except for minus one person in the way they play him out was Spoilers. freaking amazing. <laughs> I was um, with that. Real life Christopher Evans Welsh. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, in terms of the show, I lo- uh, I loved I loved his funeral was one big thread of passing on Snapchat and being unhappy yeah. with Snapchat. <laughs> I, I just I'm I, it's a geek thing. I follow tech news. I do a podcast on this kind of stuff, and it's just that just cracked me up. <laughs> so much um <laughs> i mean but that's one of those things that like if you pay attention to like tech news like that and listen to way too many tech podcasts you'll get little things that nobody else does um but and and, and i and i understand for people that live out there uh they're like yeah that's pretty much how it is so it, it's very authentic in that and still with the humor so you know much like office space was like yeah that's how my office is you know <laughs> this this really you know kind of fits into that um, I, I, I actually kind of joke, um, Alpha Lab is the incubator here in, in Pittsburgh. I attended their demo day um, uh, last summer, I think. And it was after Silicon Valley had ended. And I was like, this feels just like the end of Silicon Valley when they're presenting everything. <laughs> and um, I don't think they appreciated it at Alpha Lab when I said that. But anyways. But. Uh, yeah, we also saw the uh, the Winkle The Winkle Vosses. The Winkle Vosses. The Winkle Vosses. The Winkle Vi. Oh, no, they've separated. <laughs> Where did you wait? Where? What? The Winkle of yeah, were from, from on the... Silicon Valley. The real ones. Oh, they're on that show. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah, so, well, there's yeah. a, there's they a lot of a lot of jokes up on the on the whole tech thing. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of cameos by like tech. Oh, so they don't have like they don't have permanent roles on the show. No, 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 no. Okay. no, no, cameos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm um, telling you, it's Entourage for computer geeks. It's the exact it same model around the show. It is. Except um, it has nothing to do with Hollywood and everything to do with. Well, Silicon Valley. <laughs> Wasn't Kid Rock in the first episode? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, because they really explore this concept of of uh, uh, we're trying to garner up investors and stuff. So here's uh, we paid Kid Rock to play for you geeks that probably yeah, don't and to I Kid think Rock. Uh, Matt Cain and Buster Posey of the Giants were on this week's episode. That's right. That's right. Because yeah. they they rented uh, the Giant Stadium. Oh wow! <laughs> and, <they're laughs> and what are they doing or, at Giant or, Stadium? Do you have a favorite part to that episode? Like I, I like when uh, Richard was like, "I want to go in and be an asshole." Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was. That's a great line. <laughs> yeah, because they was, kept. Oh, because they started. Funny. They were looking for new investors for for their series <laughs> funding, and and the one guy like just flipped out on them after they they passed on them after courting them and basically renting the giant stadium and doing all this stuff, uh, to 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 schmooze them right. And they're like, "This is negative enforcement." So the other guy, other guy went in there, told them off, and they gave him like twice the offer. So they just started doing this to investors around town and just like put themselves oh, way over and, and where they find the line. Oh man. <laughs> do, they work, <laughs> do they work for they, fictional... they found the line of how far they could push people then Well, it's probably exactly what you think the line would be. <laughs> I'll leave that for you. I'll leave that for you. But it's it's good. It's worthwhile. It's it's it, it, it's a good time. So awesome. Are you I'll gonna eat all of those croissants? And if not <laughs> <laughs> you just stopped. <laughs> you just said, if not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's basically how it goes on the show. Uh, mm-hmm. anyways. I don't think there were croissants. I think there were pastries, but still. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I, I'm so glad that that's back. I even watched Veep today. Veep was actually okay. So, But that awkward comedy is something a little different. So, uh, Wait, in Veep is what's her face? That's the president, Julia Louise Dreyfus. Yeah, she starts as the vice president, and apparently, I can't remember how. It's very, it's in line with House of Cards. That's, that's, an, that's another one I have to watch. Yeah, but, I haven't watched this season because I know it would take up my entire life <laughs> for that day. Because <laughs> that's like that's like the one show. Mm-hmm. Like, so I had this, I had the discussion at work where I'm like, House of Cards compared to Orange Is the New Black. Orange is New Black, you kind of watch it every week, and or, you know, you can break it up, basically. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, I have to see the next episode. You kind of just, you kind of just like, ah, uh, you know, I think I'll keep going, because mm-hmm. this is entertaining. House of Cards, you have to watch it all, because if you miss something, you've missed the entire, <laughs> like, like, you've missed something. There's a lot of subtle <laughs> things in there. Like, I don't understand why we just did this thing, and, and then we 
killed that guy. You know, it, it, everything comes back on yeah. that show. It's like homework. It's like <laughs> <laughs> House of Cards it's is like homework. You just get to study it. Yeah. 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 I heard it's um, it, it's like really intellectual and it's big time. Yeah. yeah. Big time. So I haven't learned studied. anybody's name in that show. <laughs> What's the president's name? That Underwood. And I can't remember her first name. So <laughs> you just hear it enough. Mean they're going to die. So. There's like, there's un- the Underwoods. They're obviously president and such. And there's the Russian guy. And then there's that guy. And then I can't remember, um, uh, you know, it comes along until somebody says, well, you're the secretary of state. So like, good. I didn't know why he was hanging around. You know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, it well, isn't, isn't the black guy secretary of state this, this season? And I just like didn't put that together until like six episodes in, you know. And you're not, the, you're not selling me on it too well here. But uh, no, just, I'm just selling my inability to keep up with House of Cards. It doesn't mean you won't have a problem with it. I probably will. <laughs> it's really good. It's just, you have to, it's this almost is, like you have to over. This is not one that you tweet while you watch. Yeah. Clear your schedule. <laughs> yes, clear your schedule. <laughs> no, this is the House of Cards weekend. We're not planning anything. That, that That's what my Friday was for Daredevil. I'm like, okay, <laughs> so going to work out early and go watch Daredevil and then not move until Daredevil is done. Ooh. Maybe eat dinner at some point. Nice. Malango, can I throw a shout out here before uh, we get going? Before I wind this thing down? Before I yeah, wind this thing do down. It. Our friend Slice on Broadway, I'm going to try to pull it up here. I got breaking news. Um, it <laughs> looks like <laughs> Slice on Broadway, your friend SliceOnBroadway.com. They're down here, down the road here in Beachview. Where's that pizza at? Maybe we show that chair. Off. It's over there. <laughs> okay, it's it's here. It's here for our guests here. We, and we promise. The show is here for awesome off. cast and everything. But they just got a proclamation <laughs> from Natalia Rudiak of the City Council of Pittsburgh. There you go. I don't know what the proclamation is for. This is a this is uh, uh, information as as uh, as we get it reported here. The proclamation is, is just this breaking is news. Damn fine pizza. There you go. Best pizza on a street named Broadway. Uh, <laughs> Tuesday, April 14th, conveniently enough, podcast day here in Pittsburgh for us here in Beachview, at least, um, is now Slice on Broadway Day in the city of Pittsburgh. Ooh. So there you go. They know. They know. That is what I call Sorotron Media Bump. <laughs> Blango? Oh, oh, okay. Sliceonbroadway.com. <laughs> All right, so if you're going to go to the movies this weekend, basically you have movies that came out last weekend to watch, or you could go see Paul Bert Blurt. I can't. I, Paul I'm Blart. So Paul here. Blart. I'm going to go uh, Paul Blart and get my free movie ticket at Red Robin. Oh, um, fine They're listeners awesome. of this podcast, please do me a favor. If you even have a thought in your head about going to see Paul Blart, <laughs> Just don't and watch Daredevil. <laughs> Stay inside. There's such good stuff like, on your television like you, and your even Roku watch box. The Daredevil movie. I'm sure that will be better than Paul Blart. I can't watch Blart. that movie anymore. By the way, after the series being so good, yeah, even, I the, direct, still can. even the director's Zorn, cut is going to be I hurtful. I still can. I will explain yeah. numerous and, reasons why when we're off the air. And I am the biggest sympathizer of the direct Daredevil movie. <laughs> but anyway, sorry, uh, Malenko. Oh, Kevin James, you disappointed me. Kevin but, James. But, yes, other movies that I don't think we're going to... Yeah, I don't know. Unfriended. Unfriended right now is sitting at an 85% on Rotten Tomato. What? I'd rather I'd rather see that instead of Paul Blart. I'm hearing good things about it. Unfriended? Yeah. Are you serious? Uh, the one show is a said it's like, ah, it actually it's worked scary? out pretty good. I, the oh, scary, but a good movie, hangout, at least. That's a killer. I mean, as good as a movie Wait. can be... Is on. someone going to kill us on this Google Hangouts work? It looks it looks ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how yeah. it does. But maybe that's oh, okay. All right. I mean, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. No. I don't know who would want to let's, watch let's, a Google Hangout or a Snipe Skype Snipe. What? <laughs> I gotta think. You no, know, I okay. know a lot of people who might want to watch a Google Hangout, especially when he <laughs> talks about movies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but blown up on the big screen, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. This this is a face I hope they keep screen, it in so the so same they're... aspect ratio. They don't even fill it out. So oh, it's just wow. like a little square. I you know, the, the drop movie prices on something that's going to be 4 3. I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, guys. Let's uh let's let's close this out. Let's let's ride off let's into the Let's get out of here. 
furiously. Let's eight. ride off on our drag dragons. On our Riding dragons, out furiously. Yes. Freaking Van Diesel. <laughs> I I just love every time he says Van Diesel. <laughs> He's a van. Did anyone He's see true. that? Did anyone see? No. Him? Oh, I I uh, the Chachi saw it. Who frequents our chat room? And he's like, yeah, it's 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 good. Yeah, it's, I heard it's, it's really good. I, I know. So yeah. Um, and I think Alex said the same thing on Facebook. That there Facebook. will be an eighth movie. Oh, I'm he's sure already said that this one's going to win the Oscar. Which, if this one what? wins the Oscar, then... <laughs> Why uh, will will Paul Walker good? win a posthumous Best Actor? Or not. A oh one? God, I hope they're not. Gonna, they're going to Heath Ledger him. Heath Ledger <sighs> deserved it. What if they three D yeah, project sure. Paul Walker if he didn't win something? Coachella, we're about to get furious. <laughs> On the Graham Paul Walker. Oh, that'd be the worst. Was that the line? Was that? Let's move on before we get get, yeah. get worse. Yeah. Mario, take us out. All right, where can we find where can we find you, Mad Mike? You can find me at Mad Mike four eighty three on the Twitters, and you can also find me on the Wrestling Mayhem show later this evening. I hope you uh, also. I hope your dragon returns, and you are able to tame those other two that seem very upset with you for some reason. Well, I did I know really. What'd you do to them? I chained them up because they killed a little girl. That's true. No, From it was now the other on, one I'm that killed a little I'm just going to not girl. care about little girls. Man, things are tough up in Poughkeepsie. Mm -hmm. No, say that name again. What was it? What was it? How keeps I? Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, where can we find you? You can find me at Don't Mace with Me, which is the most awesome Twitter name ever. Just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, Don't Mace with Me on Twitter. Cool, and we might go see. I don't know if we should do. Maybe we should do a quick uh, round table on it follows with just me and you. <laughs> no one we else is going to see it. So, are you going to come? I, uh, I, I, I might be busy this weekend. I, Thursday. I, 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 no, we're going Thursday. Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, speaking of Sorg, Sorg, where can we find oh, you? Oh, I got things going on. Sorgatron.com, I got a video challenge. If you're ever interested in doing something like this, I got some uh, tips and tricks, and you can join us, and we can critique. critique. Um, and uh, uh, have all kinds of fun over there at Sorgatron.com. Check out the weekly challenge for video. Also, I got two reviews uh, last week, A Million Ways to Die in the West and the Atari Game Over documentary. Um, I think I'm going to do some more when I have a moment here. I, I watched a few over the weekend. The Sheik, uh, Harmontown, and Legend, I think, is a Legend of the Dark Knight, I think it is. No, that doesn't seem right. Um, but the one where <laughs> it's talking about, like, Batman being, like, really inspirational. Um, yeah, that's so. Legend of the Dark Knight. Legend of the Dark Knight? That seems like yeah. it would be copywritten. So, I know they can't say Batman. The website is IamBatman.com if you want to find out. All of those are on Netflix. Uh, I recommend all of them, except you will be really, really sad after Harmontown. And I don't frequent the podcast, so it's kind of new to me. So, but I'm a fan of community, so there you go. Um, that's all I got. Well... Mostly. Sawtooth Willie, well, go check him out. At Sawtooth Willie on the Twitter. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yes, you can definitely check us out on our Facebook group, The Rambling Movie Minute. And you could follow me uh, where I will sadly cry about my movie draft picks. Aww. Uh, on or at Rambling at the Rambling Mango. Um, but yeah, that's it for this week's Rambling Movie Minute. Thanks for hanging with us, and until next week, have a rambling movie weekend. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.